Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, June 7th, 2020. We begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 604, I Bind Unto Myself Today. We make our beginning in the name of the triune God, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with me in confessing our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And receive the absolution. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson for this Trinity Sunday is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 6. Isaiah writes, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for. This is our Old Testament lesson. Our gospel lesson for Trinity Sunday is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. Matthew writes, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Please join with me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our sermon hymn, Glory Be to God the Father.
my brothers and sisters in Christ. In the name of Jesus, our resurrected Lord and Savior. Amen. Today is the feast day of the Holy Trinity. It is the only day of the church here that our focus is on a doctrine, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. We use creeds, statements of faith, to confess what we believe about the Trinity. By 300 AD or so, the Apostles' Creed, which is a creed that is well known to us, was in widespread use as a statement of Christian faith, which was recited by those who were about to be baptized, and it was decidedly Trinitarian. It confessed faith in a Father, a Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is called the Apostles' Creed because it reflects the beliefs, the doctrine taught by the Apostles. And just to clarify, the Twelve Apostles did not write the Apostles' Creed. The second creed that we are familiar with is the Nicene Creed. It was developed about 381 AD in response to a false teaching by a person named Arius. The false teaching was that Jesus is not true God. The Nicene Creed is a clear statement of Jesus' divinity and a clear rejection of the false doctrine taught by Arius. It is also a creed that confesses faith in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in the Nicene Creed of 381 AD, it made clear that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all co-equal and are all true God. The Nicene Creed was also confessed by those being baptized and was also starting to be used before receiving the Lord's Supper. The third creed that we use, the Athanasian Creed, that one long creed that we use on Trinity Sunday, that was developed as a more detailed confession of faith in the doctrine of the Trinity and the doctrine of Jesus sometime in the mid-500s AD. Now, these creeds are very useful for us as Christians. First, they capture and pull together the, the core central truths of Scripture. And second, as we confess our faith using the Apostles and Nicene Creeds in particular, we remember our baptism, as these creeds were being used by those being baptized in the early church. And now let's just take a brief look at the Nicene and Apostles' Creeds. Now, you may be thinking, that was a nice little lecture on the Trinity and on the Creeds, but you may be wondering, what impact does the Trinity have on my life as a Christian every day? Well, this is the impact. It is the triune God that we have offended with our sins. And it is the triune God that forgives our sins and saves us. We see this in both our Old Testament and Gospel lessons for today. In our Old Testament lesson, we see the prophet Isaiah standing in a setting that is beyond our comprehension. The Lord is seated high and lifted up on a throne, and the train of his robe fills the whole temple. And seraphim, angels with six wings, they surround the Lord on his throne, and they sing a song that is, is spine-tangling. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The foundations are shaking. The house is filled with smoke. And there is Isaiah. When confronted with this majesty and glory, all Isaiah can manage to squeak out and say is, Woe is me. His cry, Woe is me, led by the Holy Spirit, is really a creed. It is Isaiah's statement of faith, a statement of what he believes on many different levels. It is an admission that he is lost. This is Isaiah's statement of belief that God can and should punish him. It is a confession. He is a man of unclean lips. This is Isaiah's statement of belief that he is by nature sinful and unclean. It is a cry for help and repentance. He lives in the midst of a people of unclean lips. This is Isaiah's statement of belief that he needs help from outside of himself to turn his life around, to be truly repentant, because he is surrounded by sin. It is a plea for mercy. His eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts. This is Isaiah's statement of belief that the Lord is the only one that can be merciful to him. It is a confession of faith because he believes in the promised Messiah that will take away his sin, the second person of the Trinity. And then, then we see the seraphim act. They touch his lips with the hot coal 
And Isaiah's sins are atoned for. His guilt is removed. Atoning for sins. Removing guilt is something that only the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ himself, accomplished in our behalf. What we see here with Isaiah is a glimpse. A glimpse of how the full Godhead, the Trinity of God, works to forgive our sins. And in our gospel lesson for today, Jesus specifically instructs his church to, quote, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In other words, in the name of the pa and power of the Trinity, spread the good news of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins to all people. And here again, the Trinity is what saves us from our sins. Consider this also. We always begin worship in the name of the Trinity, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then led by the Holy Spirit, we confess our sins to the Trinity. And finally, at Christ's command, the second person of the Trinity, the forgiveness of sins is spoken in the full name of the Trinity. Now, there is so much more that could be said about the Trinity. We just don't have time today. But for now, we do well to remember this that our confession of faith in the Trinity, as set forth in the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds, is critical to our salvation. Without faith in the Trinity of God, and all that the Trinity of God has done for us, there is no forgiveness of sins, and there is no salvation. This is how and why the doctrine of the Trinity is important for us in our daily lives. May God grant that we always honor and cherish and love and praise the Most Holy Trinity in this life and the life to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join with me in prayer. Let us go to our triune God in praise and with prayer for ourselves and all people and their various needs and conditions. Triune God, Grant strong faith and willing obedience to the church here and around the globe. Through your word and sacraments, grant the Holy Spirit to move us to humble praise and adoration. Open the doors of opportunity that all may share the good news of your might in creation and our Savior's power over sin and death. Lord God the Father, give good weather and bountiful harvests to all who tend fields and manage livestock. Safety and prosperity to all who discover and distribute the resources of this planet and guide and give guidance and wisdom to all who protect your marvelous creation for the good of everyone. Lord Jesus, the Son of God, be with all caregivers, those who are trained professionals, spouses and dear friends and family, that they tend the sick and your loving with care. We also bring before you especially Gordon Campen, Liz Rader, Nancy Schulenberg, Missy Anderson, Jed Zumhengst, Mary Slusher, Bill Thompson, Megan Dunham, Gary Rather, and Selena Fedrick. Visit, restore, strengthen, and console them, that we may rejoice together with them in your grace and healing. We pray in particular for Gary Rather, who has been released from the hospital and is recovering at home. Continue to heal him and restore him to full health. Be also with Diane and others who minister to him during this period of healing. Bless them as they look to you as the true source of healing. Bless those from this congregation who serve in our nation's military. Trevor Phillips, Joshua Rope, Justin Muehlbach, James Umhengst, Nathan Adi, Evan Burns, Miguel Valdivinos, and Neil Nidefer. Keep them safe as they engage in their duties. Strengthen their faith. Help them to be witnesses of you in all they say and do. May they serve you and this nation with honor. Holy Spirit, who calls and, calls and leads us to faith, we bring before you the preschool ministry you have blessed us with. You know those children who are ready and eager to hear your word of forgiveness. We pray that you would prepare their hearts to receive the good news of the gospel, that it would take root, and that they might grow up to be Christians. Into your hands, Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn. We praise you and acknowledge you, O God. 